here to teach you some manners. Manners don't need none, don't want none, ain't gonna get none. Oh, Rudy, everyone needs manners. R for respect, E for excellence, S for super, P for patient, E for esteem, C for considerate, P for terrific. I am an R, I am a R-E, I am a R-E-S-P-E-C-E-T, -E -E and I will R-E-S-P-E-C-E-T -E -E for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's so fun. What did you like about the program? Doing the table manners a lot. And I like seeing the play. I like mostly everything. Hi, Lillian. Glad Hello. you could come. I wanted to ask you, uh, what when you heard that it was going to have Proud to be Polite in your classroom, what was your reaction? Well, I think I was kind of glad because my manners aren't exactly well, your manners aren't exactly. They're just not exactly on track. Okay. All right. So you were kind of interested in it. Now, once it started, what was your reaction to it once it started? I liked it. Was there something about it that you really liked, especially liked? Yeah. What How we did something active that was about what we learned. Could you give some examples of that? Well, in good sportsmanship, when we learned about good sportsmanship, we had a contest about when we folded clothes. Um, there was, our class was divided in two, and we had baskets of clothes. And we had to fold them up and put them in the basket, and we had to do it real fast. Is there something you would suggest to make it even better? Not really. It's real fun the way it is. Okay. All right. Has anyone complimented your manners since you've been in the program? Yes, ma'am. Who did? Miss Hartley. What did she say? She said, well, she said that's using good, proud to be polite manners. Okay. Good. What was your favorite lesson? Mm, table manners. Oh, why was that one of your favorites? Because it was the best thing I've done in my life. We get to cut up these and start eating them properly. What did you eat? We ate marshmallows and Reese's cups and we ate a half banana. I've been, what are some of the manners you've been taught before? Um, how to say polite words and I've been taught uh, and I've been taught not to yell at people that kind of upset me. Okay. When you first learned that you were going to be um, taught manners in your class, what was your reaction? Well, I wasn't very excited because I didn't really know what we were going to do. Um, and, all right, so once it started, what was your reaction? I thought it was neat because um, we got to watch little um, videos. What was one of your favorite lessons? The um, table manners because a lot of times when I eat something, my parents cut my food and it's kind of like I'm a baby, but when we um, ate at the um, table manners things, they let you cut your own food. What was one of the other lessons that you really liked? When we acted as if we were on a field trip. And has anyone complimented your manners since you've been in the class? Who has Miss Johnson. Things? What did she say? Well, a lot of times if I'm talking to her or another person, someone might interrupt me and start talking when they know I was talking. So a lot of times I'll just say, excuse me, I'm talking to that person. Have you noticed an improvement in the behavior of your classmates? A little bit. A little bit? So they're more polite to you? You all are more polite to each other now? Do you think manners are important? What what why do you think they're important? Uh, because if you didn't have manners, then people wouldn't want to be around you. Whenever I went back home, I taught my mom how to set the table, and she was surprised how much I had 
friend and tried to be polite. Did you correct anybody's manners at your house after mm. being in there? My mom once. You did? What did you tell her? Well, um, she started setting the forks on the right side, so I put them on the left side. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I had two parents this year come to my classroom and ask if, if, they, if I would allow them to do the Proud to be Polite program in my classroom. And they had been in my classroom some this year and noticed that there was a need. Um, so I said, of course, you know, that would be something that I was going to try to teach, but I didn't have a program. And um, we do have a guidance program, but it talks about so many different things. It was hard to get um, manners and all the other things that guidance curriculum entails. So um, I said, of course, that we could do that and uh, allowed 45 minutes a week for them to come in. And um, we did a range of activities. Um, they would teach a lesson and then we would do an activity that went along with it to follow up. And then the children took home a little sheet that reminded them about what they learned. Um, some of the most encouraging times that we had, um, one, one lesson was about how to be a, a good sport. And we did that lesson the day before we had May Day Play Day, which is our field day. And we practiced what to do in the case that we didn't win tug of war or if we, um, a friend wasn't being fair. And to do that, we, um, the, the parents brought in laundry and we folded laundry and whoever, whichever team could fold the quickest one. And um, we had to learn how to be a good sport. Well, it paid off because on field day, we got to the, the finals of tug of war and we didn't win. And I was so excited that nobody said, they cheated. We didn't have any of that like I've seen in the past. Everybody kind of just smiled and said, you know, nice job and, and walked away. Another really encouraging time was um, when they taught them the table manners, which as I'm sure you've heard from other children, that was a real popular lesson. They came in and they, um, Travis, who you interviewed, out just loud and clear, he goes, this is the best day of my life. And <laughs> he loved it. I mean, he's over there sawing away at his little, um, it was Reese's, Reese's Cup where it was the meat product for them to, to cut, and that was really neat. And, and that's something that if the parents don't take time to teach children how to set the table properly, they don't ever know. I mean, that's not something that you just pick up on the street and learn how to do. You know, you don't learn that from from getting in trouble, what I'm saying. So um, that was exciting. You, you don't learn it by natural consequences. You know, if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. So um, it's, it's encouraging to see them teaching other children how to do things like that. But did a lot of them have sort of a non-working knowledge, you think? Well, or, or many of the things, um, they kind of knew what was right from wrong, but for most of it, the topic wasn't teaching um, just how to get along. It was more in depth. For example, the table manners. You know, they knew that you put a fork and a spoon and a knife on the table, and they've probably gotten away with putting it on there incorrectly, because the parents might not know how to do it correctly. So to have, you know, and, and you taught in a way that the program taught in a way that even I remember, you know, fork F O R K. You know, that that worked perfectly with left L E F T, um, and they did not have much of a working knowledge. Um, a couple of things. They knew they needed to be a good sport, but it was really hard. And we talked about ways to handle if someone wasn't being a good sport instead of, you know, a positive way to handle that and a negative way to handle that. Mm -hmm. My class this year was individually, I have really, really neat children, but as a whole, we weren't clicking. And um, because of, of this program, they've really been thinking before they were speaking and, and thinking about other people's feelings and how is the best way to handle certain situations. And, and because of all that, we have, we, I've seen a big turnaround this year. Well, what have some of your neighboring teachers in the pond had to say about it? Well, on Thursdays, you know, because we do a lot of planning together, and I'll say, you know, this afternoon I'm not going to, I've got probably polite. And, oh, what's that? You know, who's doing that? Why are y'all doing that? You know, I explained that the parents, and I, the parents came to me with the idea, and, and they're really interested. Um, it would be great if the guidance program could pick up and do some of it. I was really lucky that I had parents to do it because it wasn't something that I was willing just to pull right out and try off. You know, we have a million things going on and it's hard to pick up another thing, but I was so glad. And now, if I do this again, I would certainly know that it's something that I want to do and try again in a new school. Um, what were the costs for doing it? Did you lose your planning time so they could do it? No, um, I gave up 45 minutes of unit of study time. and. Um, and what we usually do is we cut everything a little bit short during the day. Would you know take a few minutes here, a few minutes there, so we could get you in the study in before our time. Um, I, we just it was real important, so I put it on high on the priority list on Thursdays to be sure that we had that 45-minute block. Um, 
no monetary cost for me other than just my time. So During school mm -hmm. day, not afterward or before the plan or anything? No. Um, the mothers, Mrs. Ward and Mrs. Hartley, were doing most of the planning. However, there wasn't a whole lot of planning they had to do. The videos there, you know, we thought through the activities, but they brought it to me and said, this is what we're going to do. And that was terrific. Um, it didn't add more time for me to plan. And it wouldn't have been a whole lot of time anyway, because I think the way that I've seen the program, most everything's laid out. It's not something that you have to dig up. But it's here. The program's here. All they have to do is allow themselves, um, you know, 45 minutes of instructional time and maybe ask for a parent volunteer to help or get a teacher assistant. But you wouldn't even have to do that unless you wanted to. I mean, all the activities, one person could easily teach. And um, I, I think the teachers would be real encouraged and open to try it. I, I think that they should. I mean, because it, it really does, it, it teaches children that they're not, things they're not going to get other places. You know, they just don't learn some of these things at home. We went to a play, and everyone sat real nicely like we'd practice, and then the end came. And they clapped once, and then the, they all bowed, and everybody clapped again. Well, I had a couple of kids not clap, you know. And I thought, oh, my goodness, we learned that. And we came back to the room, and we talked about it. And they said, you know, we were wrong. We should have done that. We really weren't paying attention. You know, we weren't watching. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a thing that they were taught. You know, when someone's performing, whether you like it or not, you're going to show them your appreciation. That's the polite thing to do. It was my vision two years ago to do this in the classroom. We did this program at our church when it was Camp Manners for a week and I worked with uh, Ann Humphreys mm -hmm. and I was so impressed with the program. I loved it, everything about it. Fell in love with it <laughs> and um, thought every child needed it. Every parent needed it. I wanted to teach it to the parents and I just thought that um, bringing it into the public school classroom is where it needed to be and working with the teachers and so we in the beginning just signed a volunteer slip and said this is what we would like to do. Um, actually, I did that and shared the idea with Cameron, and Cameron was the one that really made it happen. She called the PTO president and said, we need to buy this, we want to do this. So um, I had the idea, but she got the ball rolling, and the teacher we worked with was very cooperative, and we just said, we want to give you a break every Thursday. If you can give us 45 minutes, we'll come in and do this program. And we would get her involved occasionally, and sometimes Cameron and I would do it ourselves. But What lessons seem to be? They seem to respond to most. They all love the one on table manners. We made a very special occasion and had the paper plates to match the placemats, and we made it a really big deal for the children. They set their plate, and we had their food on platters. We used the marshmallows, bananas, and and large Reese's cups, and so they were to use their fork and their knife to cut their food. And and I always tell them, if you can cut a marshmallow with a knife, you've passed the manners test. We initially sat down together, Cameron and I, and looked at, looked at the program, watched the video, and planned the first two lessons extensively to the minute because we wanted to come in prepared. We knew the teacher had given us this time, and we wanted her to know that we were prepared for the classroom. And we typed the agenda, and she had a copy, so she knew exactly what we would be doing. Uh, then as we went through, we realized we could be a little more flexible. The curriculum has several ideas, and we would sort of pick and choose what we thought would work well for that day. We would choose um, supportive activities. We always started with the video, um, would do maybe two supportive activities and end with a story, and the children liked that. And occasionally we would divide the, the class into groups, and um, the guidance counselor came in one week and worked with us. We wanted her to, to um, have some exposure to what was being taught and then the children would relate her to the program too. Mainly we wanted the children to be involved. That was what we were trying to do each lesson. We didn't want to have a lecture time. And and today you were here and you saw that we used the walking canes and the blindfolds mm -hmm. because we think they're going to remember more if they're involved in the learning process. Mm -hmm. All through the year we have seen, I have seen just individually behavior changes. Uh, the children have you know, come up to me saying, oh, Miss Hartley, we really have enjoyed doing the program. Um, I have learned how to set the table. Um, they're, they're excited about that. Or I have learned how to work out a situation on the playground. Um, behavior changes mean instead of acting negatively when someone doesn't want you to play with them, they know how to handle that situation. Um, they know how to handle um, respect to property. Um, if someone has um, lost something, they know uh, the routine. Instead of just accusing someone, 
um, wrongly of, of taking it. They know how to go through that process. So behavior changes, if you're asking what have I seen, it, it's just been a broad spectrum of everything, every lesson that we have taught them uh, from uh, the first lesson to, to the end. Um, they know how to handle these situations now, so that's very encouraging. The teachers have a full schedule. Uh, the guidance department has their full schedule. And I think um, teachers do appreciate when parents will take the initiative to volunteer and then carry through. That was one thing in the beginning we made sure that we didn't just dump this back on the teacher. That here's the book, here's the date, you do it. That was, we were real conscious about that. And so we're real thankful. And uh, we might have other opportunities to do this as the children get older. Um, so it was a great experience. Very good experience. I think the children definitely benefited from it. Even those children who have been taught manners at home, it was a good reinforcement. I think every child learns something every week. Mm -hmm. And even with our own children, you know, there were things that then we could take home and we always can refer back to we were proud to be polite. And the teacher could do that after using the curriculum as she's working with the children in classroom management. She could say, remember, proud to be polite and it triggers. Yeah. There is something. There there is a way. So that was what we really noticed. We told the children at the beginning that we are going to be here. We're going to watch you grow up. And when you're fifth graders, we're going to be saying, remember, proud to be polite. Today, I'm proud to introduce to you again, Mrs. Ann Humphrey. Mrs. Humphrey <laughs> wrote our proud to be polite curriculum. And she's here today to give you a few closing remarks. Mrs. Humphrey, thank you. No matter how much money you have, if you have manners, you're welcome in all places. That means that you're not just good for yourself, but you're a good citizen of this country. And if we all work on our manners, I think we'll have a better country. So I'm very happy to be with you. I thank you for doing such a good job with the Proud to be Polite program and for letting us come and see you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come up and he'll give you a certificate and I have a sticker and then you'll go back to your chair. And please try to put these in your folder nicely. Okay, this is something if your mother likes to say things that she'll want to say. This is your Proud to be Polite diploma. Okay, Emily Crumpler. Once upon a time, children were taught to be young ladies and gentlemen from the time they could talk. But today, etiquette education seems to have vanished. Which manners should your kids know, and what are the best ways to teach them? Here with the answers from Eticon in South Carolina is child etiquette expert Anne Humphreys. Hi, Anne. Hi, Hi. Good to see you. What has happened? Do you think that society has made a conscious effort to sort of not teach manners yeah. anymore? And what does that say about us? Are we yeah. into the me thing as opposed to all of us, you know, in it together? It's a part of being pulled so many directions. I mean, we all have so many things to do. And there right. is something about the culture being bold and brash. We appreciate that. And yet, it still is valued. And that's what we try to do is raise the concept of stability in the work um, with children. Right. And that it is valuable. Marriage will take you where money won't. But right. what's different, what we have not had the tools to teach manners. It's always been sort of formal, like you were saying, stuffy and yeah. sit up straight and up obscure right. kinds of lessons. Elbows off the table, Mabel, is what yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But if we can make it easy, fun, finesse, and frequency, right. yeah. it makes it easy on everybody. And you've done that, which you actually have to camp for kids. Right. I started because I was barking at my own children, who were poor little things. They were only three and five-year-olds. I was saying, sit up straight, you know, and she wouldn't mouth close. And they would look at me with their little eyes, and it was too hard on me. Yeah. It was hard on them. So now we try and do things positively. Started a camp, now we go to vid videos. Uh -huh. and games and things that because this is makes it more accessible to yeah. but you you really like to start early on i mean i'm already yeah. starting with yeah. my daughter for like please and thank you but okay. i'm not getting into the 
you know, chew with your mouth closed. So it becomes normal behavior as right. opposed right. to something they, they think is a, is a punishment for them. Right. Okay, what we want to do is kind of go through the age group here, starting with age three. What can you teach your child, and what should a three-year-old know? All right, a three-year-old should know how to hold a spoon. Mm -hmm. A spoon is held like a pencil. Now, you see on commercials, little children are really cute eating their cereal like this. Uh -huh. Cute when they're three. It is very appalling when they're five, six, and seven, <laughs> and they're eating out in public. So hold it like a spoon. Uh, we teach them basic manners of words, please, uh -huh. thank you, and yes, or yes, ma'am, or no, but not huh, like uh -huh. that, uh -huh. and they come when you're called. Uh -huh. All right, so that, well, you also teach them not to answer the phone. They're too young, uh -huh. they That's breathe true. on it, and some people are calling long distance, so. <laughs> when, they, when they get to be bigger, grown up, they can answer the phone. Give them a phone for the time yeah, being. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now by age five. All right, well, by age five, they? though, you can start uh, ex showing them a little bit about the hold button, and they can pick up the phone and say, hello, just a minute, please. Uh -huh. They can start adding vocabulary such as, need any help, and I'll be happy to. Those are very uncommon words <laughs> yeah. these days. Also about uh, becoming aware of when they're interrupting. We call Bert the blurt, you know, being aware of blurting, blurting, and interrupting. Mm -hmm. One good way to teach children is to have the adult in the house role play the bad way to interrupt and then have somebody you know very exaggerated uh -huh. oh you know i really didn't appreciate that uh -huh. and pointing that out in movie characters cartoons and tv programs uh -huh. yeah adding to that how you teach children um is another way to reward them for the good behavior good manners and uh, conversely would you say punishing them for bad behavior does that work or should you not oh, do uh, that well of course <laughs> <laughs> first of all you make it easy and light right. and you don't just dump on them at the last minute. For example, you're driving to the wedding, for example. You're going to meet Aunt Hilda and you're going to need to sit up straight. No, you're going to rehearse that all along, okay. way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Little pieces in the car, the back seat. You know, what, what, is the, what can you tell me about interrupting or answering the phone or right. eating? What if you get something in your mouth you really don't like? Let's talk about that so a little. A lot of it is repetition. repetition? Just, they have to hear it constantly. Well, also, but oh, keeping constantly. it simple. But yeah. Simple, simple. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then, okay. like, uh, by age five, they should be able to take a compliment. There's a little boy, oh, yeah. I, I looked at him and said, aren't you a handsome little man? He said, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you can't even take a compliment at your age. That's, oh, I, stop. Oh, I looked at him. You know, we have to learn to take compliments. Okay, by, by age seven. seven. Now, seven is when they can, they can start accepting food tactfully or refusing food tactfully. <laughs> so, you know, it's coming up to be Thanksgiving. We've had some um, holy days, and we're coming up on some holy days. Uh -huh. And so they're going to be offered great Aunt Sadie squash that is renowned. With the marshmallows on the top? <laughs> well, that would be sweet potato <laughs> okay, casserole. Well, that's right. okay. But uh, a child, you know, doesn't, you know, they go, ooh. But a tactful way would be to say, no, thank you, but it looks delicious. Uh -huh. okay. And we also teach them... Well, we're not teaching them to lie, are we? No, that's not lying. Okay. It, it could look delicious. delicious. Okay. All Another right. thing, now, so, this is, we could always talk about honesty and tact. Um, for example, someone may be fat, dumb, and ugly, but we don't see <laughs> the words, you know? You're going to have to say that. But we also teach them to take just a little spoonful of food and maybe move it around with their fork. That kind of takes them off the spot. People are shoving food at children all the time, and they're not equipped to refuse it. That's true. Okay. That's true. I suppose age I should do age nine, nine. right. Well, let's talk about thank you notes. That's an important concept. Ah. Now, thank you notes does not have to be hard. The reason I started teaching thank you notes was because it was like World War III in our own family. Uh -huh. You better write those thank you notes. Sit right. down. Now we have chocolate. We have cookies. We have music. We have cocoa. We have interesting stamps and we make it fun. I write my thank you notes the same time they're writing your, theirs. Mm -hmm. That's so a great idea. That's and a the good same idea. With, um, with the punishment. Now, if they're not doing, uh, we sometimes take go into the living room and have a real frank talk, which they hate. Children, you know, it's like, oh gosh, he's going to lecture me. Please don't. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, these, you know, most of these seem relatively easy if you just start at an early age. Right. You're not constantly, you, you don't have to confront it all of a sudden. It's something that you've, you know, introduced to them over the years. Mm -hmm. And by 11, you say, teach them how to be tactful, like you were saying. Right. And uh, what about, oh, that's a good question. What about other kids? All right. When other when kids come to your family. family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. We're doing missionary work here. All right. <laughs> okay. There are times when you stay to the child. At our house, you take off. And we only have a couple of seconds left. So I just want to say, basically, just make sure your kids have their manners. Yeah. We want to thank you. Thank and you. I know it's rude of us to interrupt, no. but I'm sorry. We're out of time. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. You're always welcome here at our home. I did interrupt, didn't I? Mm -hmm.
the students today will present the topics that were discussed um, during the six-week period that we met with the students. We're going to start with Ms. Waldron's class in third grade. Thank you. For the past six weeks, Ms. Humphreys has been teaching us about good table manners at camp meetings. We have, we have learned many things, including polite words such as. Please pass me you want someone to pass you something. Thank you when someone gives you something. Everyone should always use good manners whether you are, are at home, school, a friend's house, or a restaurant. Courtesy and politeness are contagious. We love Ms. Humphreys and Ms. Halloran too. Ms. Humphreys and Ms. Holland has been teaching us about table setting and manners, respecting differences and other good manners. At this time we would like to take we would like to demonstrate good table manners. Always be ready and willing to help. Lacey Marcherano, what was one thing you learned about differences? I learned that we should always be ready to accept an answer of no, no thank you, I do not need any help today. I think I can do it myself. Lindsay Beckham, what was one thing you learned about differences? I learned that we should remember that we are all different in some way. Some people's differences are just more noticeable than others. We should never make fun of someone because they are different. Instead, we should help everyone feel good about themselves in any way that we can. So we, we say, I like you, you're different. Hi, my name is Clark, and our class learned new ways to get along better with others. We learned um, fighting and arguing um, don't solve problems. Here are some things we learned. Hi, my name is Nikki, sharing your toys. Hi, my name is Erica, we nice to meet your students at school. Hi, my name is Bryson. <laughs> tell someone nicely three times to leave you alone, then tell an adult. Hi, my name is Brittany. Ask neighbors to get permission before coming to your yard to play. 
time I knew it was Elizabeth. If someone is starting a fight with you, talk about the problem instead of fighting. Hello, my name is Paula. Ask brothers and sisters tonight's sake to leave you alone. Remind them that your safety belongs to you. Hi, my name is Ashley. Always treat others the way you want to be treated. Hi, Jen. Remember, let's get along better together. The next section will be presented by Mrs. Grant's class. We would like to tell you what we have learned about table settings. The plate is located in the middle of the play setting. The napkin is on the left side beside the plate. During the meal, you put the napkin in your lap. Glass is placed on the right side. The fork is placed on the left side with the plate. The spoon is placed on the right side. And the knife is placed on the right side of the plate. Now let's review. The napkin is placed on the left side with the fork. The glass is placed on the right side of the plate. The spoon is placed on the right side of the plate. The fork is placed on the right side, on the left side of the plate. The knife is on the right side of the plate. The napkin is placed in your lap during the meal. Now we are ready for the food.
Icy Cool is eavesdropping, listening on the phone with his pinkies talking. And is that very good manners? No. 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 So she wants to say to him what she wants him to do. So you're going to say, would you please hang up the phone so I can ask a private question? Can you please hang up the phone so I can ask a private question? No. All right. <laughs> no, I'm listening. All right. Ask him again. Can you please hang up the phone? Can you say yes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Try it again. No. Yes. Ah, you did it. You did it. Now, what are you going to say to him when you see him in the kitchen next time? Thank you for being Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Mac, the bad part of the carrot. I'm going to ask you, then when we talk about light words and phrases, um, if you don't understand what somebody has said, hold up, Judy, because you're interrupting him. If you'll stay quiet, that would be good. If you don't understand what somebody says, what do you say? I can't hear you. All right, another word for that. I beg. I beg your pardon. All right. Or you could say, pardon me. <laughs> All right, let's let her talk. Yeah. Yeah, good. Do you take the biggest piece when you're offered something? Remember the angel food cake we had? Which piece do you take? The one the top. Very good. And how do you chew with your napkin? And your napkin goes the left. In your oh, in your lap. Left. That's right. Very good job. Thank you very much. Okay. Would you like to take right here? Now, I'd like these three students who have been at Bethlehem for a long time. You all come over here and you're playing with each other. All right? And you're the, you're the new student. All right? And you kind of come up and kind of start going towards the playground. All right? Now, one of you all, what's a good manner thing to do when you see a new student? Okay. All right, introduce yourself. My name is David. Um, and my name is um, Marisa Ness. All right, can you say your name? One of the things when you're new in school is you like to know how to get around, don't you? Where things are. So, Goody, I'd like you to show Miss Pinky where the cafeteria is. Just pretend that. Come on, I'll show you where the cafeteria is. Come on, I'll show you where the cafeteria is. Now, do you remember what we talked about handshakes? Did we shake hands? Mm -hmm. What do you remember about handshakes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get a good grip and shake hands. And where do you look at them? Right in your eyes. So everyone hold your hand out like this and find a partner to shake hands because you want to push your palms together like that. That's right. Let me know. We're going to have a performance. I'll get your clip. I believe in December, in the evening, where your parents will come, if they're able to, and you will show off what you've learned. And we'll get some more details back to you. Um, Grant will let you know if you have a meeting today to see this. We'll have a reception, and you all can practice uh, what you've learned and show off. I think you've done very, very well. You've been very gracious and kind to have me. And you've been very kind to me. It makes me feel good and makes me able to um, do a good job for you. So treat people respectfully across the table. I hope to see you in the summer. I'm really going to miss you. Are they broken if you want? No. Your plastic. Oh, oh all right. Thanks. I'm going to go on to the next class. Thank you for having me. Bye. 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 Bye.